Hello everyone and welcome to my bookshelf. So it has been a few years since I have done a bookshelf tour. If you don't know, my bookshelf has gone through a lot of changes in these past few years. Um, we moved officially into this house, I want to say maybe four years ago. <laughs> I don't know. But either way, I had a beautiful like office in our guest bedroom that I put both of my shelves that my husband had made and it was awesome. And then, you know, we had a second kid. So I had to give that room up with my bookshelf. So then I I um, downsized to one shelf, which the, my husband still made. That was in our garage because we kind of conformed our garage into an office space for my husband and I. Mainly him. He works out there because he works from home. And then my bookshelves. And that really wasn't working out. The lighting was horrible. It really wasn't conducive to film out there because he works out there and it just wasn't right. So now we have moved to these shelves. So these are the ones that my husband, so these are not the ones my husband built. These are just your standard kind of Ikea Billy bookshelves that everyone has. You know, it is what it is. I have three of them. I've made them into a corner and there's a good chance I will buy a fourth eventually. But either way, we moved it into the living room and it just makes a lot more sense for them to be displayed and also just for filming. It's just a lot easier. I'm very sad that I don't have my shelves that my husband built because they were huge. They were really, really tall they were really long these are very very short they don't you can't fit a ton of books in one but either way you know times change it happens um speaking of changes this is probably gonna change a lot i just got these like a month ago is it gonna change a ton the way it looks probably so stay tuned for that but either way i just wanted to preface that with the many um different changes my bookshelf has gone through through over the years this is just my current one so yeah i'm gonna stop talking and we'll get right into the bookshelf tour okay so this is the top left shelf all the way so this is one that's kind of like just a mixture of things because this will eventually get filled i'm thinking it's probably gonna get filled with thrillers because all my other thriller shelves are um, totally fools. First book I have is Finlay Donovan is Killing It by L. Cosmano. Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. And I have a really old beat up copy of The Fellowship of the Ream by J.R.R. Tolkien. This was my dad's. So I don't know why it's here. It's just here. I have a bookend and then I have this beautiful puffin edition of Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. Over in the middle here, I just have like my Harry Potter box set. So I got this years ago for Christmas or something. I like keeping it like this. You can also turn it around and you can see the whole um, landscape of Hogwarts. So this is one of my favorite things I have. And then I have this owl that my husband got me. This is Hedwig, obviously, I like to keep out. And then I have this beautiful Marauder's Math mug. Very beautiful. So. I don't use it at all because it's just so pretty. King of Harry Potter, this is a shelf that probably will change just because I don't think it's very practical. So these are all the illustrated versions of Harry Potter. I am missing one. It's on loan to a friend. I think she forgot she had it, so I need to remind her. But I have the Sorcerer's Stone, Chamber of Secrets. I do have Prisoner of Azkaban. It's lent out right now. Goblet of Fire and the Order of Phoenix. I would pull them out, but it's gonna, it'll take me a long time to do that. So have these beautiful editions of Fantastic Beasts. They're original screenplay where to find them um I, I shouldn't really have this because i loathe the movie but the book is beautiful crimes of grindelwald i don't even have the third one have i seen the third fantastic piece no i don't plan to here i have my wand i got from the wizarding world of harry potter i believe this is just like my birth month i wish it have gotten a character wand. i have this which is really really cool so my husband got this for me for a birthday or something it is a music box and if you open it up says Harry Potter. I mean, how cool is that? So this shelf will probably change just because I don't think it's very practical. A lot of my Harry Potter stuff is still out in the garage. So that's probably where this will go. So I love it and I will keep it, but I just don't think it's very practical for in this area. This is the first of my many romance shelves, which are somewhat organized, somewhat not. Either way, we're gonna walk through it. Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. The Bodyguard, also by Catherine Center. The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. Something Water by Christina Lawrence. As you can see, I have a slew of paperbacks. 
Island Affair by Priscilla Olivieres. I've Got Your Number by Sophie Kinsella. The X Hex by Aaron Sterling. The Bake Shop at Pumpkin and Spice by Donna Kaufman, Kay Engel, and Allison Charles, as well as The Cafe Between Pumpkin and Pie by Maria Adar, Kay Engel, and Stacey Finns. I believe this one the first one either way. They're so fallish. They're not my favorite books, but like I, I don't know if I can ever get rid of them because of the covers. Just throwing it out there. You Had Me at Ola and A Lot Like Adios, both by Alexis Dario. And lastly, Surprise Me and My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella. Welcome to one of my thriller shelves. As you can see, these are all of my book of the month thrillers as well as some other ones. The Night Swim by Megan Golden. The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Morana Garcia. The Shadows by Alex North. And All Girls by Riley Sager. Actually, this begins all the Riley Sagers I have. The Last Time I Lied. Home Before Dark, my, fi my favorite Riley Sager. Survive the Night. And hopefully I will have enough room for his newest one right here, which I do own. I haven't hauled it yet, so that's why it's not up here. My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. And the first thriller I ever read... The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Moving on to more thrillers. Hidden Pictures by Jason Rekalak. A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw. Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. And The Last Housewife, both by Ashley Winstead. Grady Hendrix novels, How to Sell a Haunted House, my favorite Grady Hendrix novel. My Best Friend's Exorcism which this is my favorite ever. I will never, this is the only copy I will own of this book because it's literally like a 80s, it's literally like a VHS 80s blockbuster one. It's amazing. The Southern's Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Al A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Santanto. The One by John Mars. And Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. This is my literary fiction kind of shelf. They're not quite romance, but they're not quite fully like any other genre they're kind of literary fiction if you will does that make sense probably not anyway i have eleanor oliphant is completely fine by gail honeyman close enough to touch by colleen oakley three frederick bachman books us against you which is the second book in the bear town series the first one's in paperback which is why it's not here Britt Marie Was Here, and Anxious People. The Kitchen Front by Jennifer Ryan. Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ding. Taylor Jenkins Reads Books, Malibu Rising. Actually, these are probably all the hardcover ones. Carrie Soto is Back. And The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which somebody so kindly sent me a signed copy with my name in it. Over here, it's just kind of the very middle shelf, so I don't have much. It probably will be filled with books soon, but for right now, I like that it's somewhat a break of just full books. I have A Rather Be Reading by Ann Bogle, which is just a book that shares all the love about reading. There's a candle behind it, ignore it, but it's just all about reading and things like that. And A Fake Plant. This will be seasonal probably for fall. You never know. Here we have some of my favorite books of all time are on the shelves, and it's like four authors on this one shelf. I have like Kristen Hanna, Frederick Bachman, alone Leanne Moriarty, and <laughs> Jenkins Reid. So starting off with probably my favorite book of all time, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, The Great Alone also by Kristen Hanna, and Firefly Lane. If you don't know, I have not watched the show, so don't ask me about it. Then like I said, I have the rest of my Frederick Bachman books here, including Bear Town. A man called Uve, and my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. Here's the one lonely in Moriarty, and my favorite one, Big Little Lies. Like I said, the rest of my Taylor Jenkins read, which is maybe in another life. One True Loves, After I Do, Forever Interrupted, and of course, Daisy Jones and the Six. Guess it, another shelf full of romances. And look, I have space. I try to do that. Is Will it be filled up soon? Probably. As you can see, these are most of my Book of the Month romances. <laughs> because I feel like with Book of the Month, you just have to keep them together because they have these on here. I have Part of Your Role by Abby Jimenez. Jimenez. The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Well Met by Jen DeLuca. The Bride Test and the Heart Principle, both by Helen Huang. One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. People We Meet on Vacation and Happy Place by Emily Henry. Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye. And In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which I realize should probably be up there with my other Christina Lauren. So mistakes were made. As always, whenever we do bookshelf tours, we find things, oh, this probably shouldn't be here, but we'll organize it later. Welcome to my fantasy shelf. I have this and I have another fantasy shelf and that's it. I need to read more fantasy. That's all. 
I have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab. This is a very special edition. I believe this was in the Owl Crate one, but either way, it is beautiful. Wayward by Amelia Hart. Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young, which is literary slash very light on the magical realism, but it's magic-y, so that's why it's here. One of my favorite books of all time, The Inheritance of Orquita Divina by Zordida Cordova. Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, another Owl Crate one, which is just, it's stunning. It's got gold foiled edges and it's just beautiful. And this is one of the instances where I have not read this book, but it's still on the shelf. The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Airy Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Madana. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baltry. Why is it here? I don't know. The Martian by Andy Weir. Probably the only sci-fi you're going to see on the shelf because I don't read a lot of sci-fi. And lastly, we have Cackle by Rachel Harrison. Welcome to another romance show. My favorite romance of all time, The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I have a whole bunch of Tessa Bailey's, Reborn Yesterday, Fix Her Up, It Happened One Summer, and Unfortunately Yours. I have Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Tali Hibbard. Also in that series, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and Actor Age, Eve Brown. I have two Emily Henrys, Beach Read, and Book Lovers. Simple Wall by Kay Tucker, Stickers. Stickers. The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberly and Osman Sigma Broca. How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Float Plan by Trish Dollar. Here's another one of my kind of emptier shelves. This will definitely be a romance shelf. I have no worries at all that I will fill it up in no time. I have The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren. This is like the fourth shelf they've been on. Don't ask me why. I'm not very organized, she says. Summer Reading by Jen... McKinley, When in Rome by Sarah Adams, Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Again, I have a random bookend and a very old vintage camera. I'm a photographer. I don't do much photography a lot anymore, but I love that. Here's my other lone fantasy shelf that's mainly Sarah J. Maas and Victoria Schwab. Here we have the Court of Thorns and Roses series. So I have Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, a Court of Wings and Ruin. And if you're wondering if I have read her other two books in the series, I have. I have read Courts of Frost and Starlight and uh, I don't know, whatever the Nesta book was. I didn't love it, so, so I don't have it, um, but I've read them all. Then I have the Crescent City series, which is the House of Blood and Earth series, I should say, Crescent City. And um, the next one is House of Sky and Breath, which I have not read. The only two books I have not read on this entire shelf are this one and The Last Edge, the Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. <laughs> then I have the Darker Shade of Magic series, which is Darker Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light. Then we have my last romance shelf. <laughs> so this one maybe could fit another book in. That's my goal. I have Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. Look, another Christina Warren book. Love and Other Words. Oh, there's another one. The Unhoneymooners by Christina Warren. <laughs> I have them everywhere, apparently. Um, the Love Wager by Lynn Painter. The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle. The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. The Royals Next Door by Karina Halley. In a Jam by Kate Canterbury. Yours Truly by, by Abby Jimenez. The Worst Best Man by Mia Soso. Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. Okay, look. The angle's gonna suck because this is on the floor. So this is the best you're gonna get right now. All three of these shelves are my YA ones. All my YA. So first up, we have the Scythe series by Neil Schusterman, which has Scythe, Thunderhead, and The Toll. The thriller, Sadie by Courtney Summers. And then the Ember in the Ashes series by Saba Tahir. We have Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, I Beyond the Storm and a reaper at the gates. That was not in focus, I apologize, because this is hard right now focusing. <laughs> Here we have a couple of fantasy, but most, for the most part, a lot of why contemporary. I have um, How the King of Elfham um, Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. I have read the Cruel Prince series. It was just, I don't own a lot of YA ones anymore, but this is illustrated, so that's why I have it. I have The Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Fangirl by Rainbow Roll. Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen. Clap When You Land by Beth Acevedo. And Girl's Guide to Tea and Tamara by Laura Taylor Namie. Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. This one's kind of thrillery, but whatever. The Inheritance Gains by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Along for the Ride. A Heart in the Body in the World by Deb Coletti. And Amy and Rogers' Epic Detour by Morgan Matson. Here we are at the last shelf. We have 
the Hunger Games trilogy, of course. We have the Hunger Games by Suzanne Collin, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay. Then I have the Illuminae series. This is both by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a sci-fi series I love, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to get rid of it because the covers are just so freaking cool. Like, I love these covers. We have Illuminae, Lumina, Gemina, and Obsidio. A few fantasies. I have Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw, Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand, Horrid by Katrina Leno. So that was everything. Now, there are some books in my garage that I have on another shelf that I haven't quite organized that I will show you maybe one day, but not right now. The last thing I have in my whole bookshelf area is my TBR card. So all the books on this card I have not read. First up, I have Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. Books are just gonna keep falling, so just imagine you don't see it. <laughs> Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfield. The Maid's Diary by Lorith Ann White. Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. Kyland by Mia Sheridan. Mixed Signals by B.K. Borison. Do You Take This Man by Denise Williams. Adult Assembly Required by Abby Waxman. Keep It in the Family by John Mars. Next Door by Helena Hunting. Make a Wish by Helena Hunting. And lastly on this shelf, Lucy Checks In by D. Ernst. On this shelf, I have The London Seance Society by Sarah Penner. The Winners by Frederick Bachman. Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. Once Upon a Sunset by Tiff Marcello. Also, Lucky Streak by Tiff Marcello. Night Road by Kristen Hanna. Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. The Wish Kiss by Aaron Sterling. And Partners in Crime by Alicia Rye. This last shelf down here is books I haven't hauled yet. So there are a couple on here that I actually have read, but I keep them on here until I haul them, until I can officially move them on my bookshelf or kind of move them up on my TBR card. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Side by M.K. Evertson. Love Light Farms by B.K. Borison, which I have read. I just, again, need to haul it. Finger by Mia Sheridan. The Kingmaker and The Rebel King, both by Kennedy Ryan. The Only One Left by Riley Sager, which I have read, so I just need to haul it and I'll move it up. Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. From Luca with Love by Maria Zapato. The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. The Serpent in the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. And lastly, in this, we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. So there you have my bookshelf door. I hope you enjoyed, hope it was somewhat interesting and that you liked it. Like I said, it's gonna change within you know, everybody changes their bookshelves. I will probably change these about 50 times throughout the year because that's who I am. But either way, I hope you enjoyed it. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very, very soon with a new video. Bye. <laughs>